Hello, how are you? Um, I am Victor Pare. Hello. Um, I'm Victor. Thanks. Okay, I will continue now. Um, I'm Victor Paredes, and I am the president of Lost Marble, which is the company who, who makes Moho now. Um, but I am also an animator, and I. Hello. But I made so so many jokes already. Um, so I, you didn't hear anything. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Victor Paredes. Uh, I am the president of Lost Marvel, who are the developers of uh, Moho Animation, the software. Uh, but I am also the rigged animation supervisor at Cartoon Saloon in some productions of Cartoon Saloon. So uh, my presentation is more about Moho and how we use it in, in, in Cartoon Saloon. So you will see a lot of the software. So if you are not really interested on in seeing software working, maybe you can leave now. It's, it's okay. Um, I'm sorry, I can't make the presentation in Arabic. I don't know anything. Sorry. I can do it in English. My English is not great either, but... I speak Spanish very well, but probably that won't help. Um, so the thing with, with Moho and Cartoon Saloon, Cartoon Saloon has been using Moho for a long time. Actually, they started using the software uh, many years ago for the Secret of Kells. And since for little effects like uh, leaves falling and some kind of special effects, and they continue using it. Uh, they have also used it in... Song of the Sea, which is this image that is not loading, this one. Um, but the thing is that they started to discover that the software could cover a lot more than simply like some elements on the uh, of the background. So they started to use it more and more. Um, this year, actually in November, we are um, releasing this movie. My Father's Dragon, it's on Netflix. Uh, I mean, it will be in, on Netflix. It, it's, uh, you, can you watch Netflix? <laughs> so and I'm very proud of this movie because we, we have been using Moho a lot. We have a, a great team of, of Moho riggers and animators. And actually, Mansur, who is there, you can, you can look at him. He will be very embarrassed now. <laughs> He's working with us, and it has been great. He's a great, great animator. And I'm, I'm very happy about this because um, in, in Cartoon Saloon, we are used to work with European people only. I mean, I, I am not European, but I had to move to Ireland uh, to work there. And, and the COVID, COVID has been very hard, of course, there too. But one of the good things that allowed us is to work with people from different parts of the world. And Mansur is one of them. Like we, we selected people from different countries, not because we wanted to select people from different countries, but because they, they, they were like the best animators we found. And that was, that was great. Um, and I, I am really excited about the future of this because it, it means these productions can, we can work with people who is not from the United States or from Europe only. And that is, I mean, as what happened? As, <laughs> as, uh, as a Chilean person, also, I'm, I'm very excited about this because I know there is talent everywhere, and this is this is great, and it's great that we are not focused only on Europe, and and we can also, I guess that's something where they were saying in the previous presentation. I didn't understand, but uh, you can also tell your own stories, and, and and you can tell the world different ways to to see to. See to, to see and to animate the world. Like, I love the, the short they showed with the, with the cars and, and all the honking, uh, because I have been one day here and it's, it's very impressive. Um, so, sadly, I can't show you anything from My Father's Dragon. We don't have the trailer released yet or anything, but I think it will be very soon. 
Um, but you can see the, the movie very soon. It's, it's great. In this case, it, it, it's, it's, it's really great because we are animating actually some of the main characters are, are made fully in Moho, and they interact with other characters that are made in, in TV paint or, or traditional animation. Um, and it really works, and that is something we are really trying to push with the software. So let me show you a, a little bit of um, how Moho works here. Uh, I have the file somewhere. For instance, um, something happened here. Okay, I'm missing a file. All right, so this is a character from Puffin Rock. So this is a TV show that uh, Cartoon Saloon has made in, in Moho. They, they made two seasons and they are working now on the movie. And Mansuri is also working in that movie. I, I hope he <laughs> finished <soon>, so. <laughs> Yeah, you should end soon, right? Yeah, it should be like in a few weeks. Um, so they are using Moho in a very, um, how to say it, like a very classical way to use the software. They, they have this, this rig and you have the, the controls to, to nod the head or to make a squash and a stretch or move the eyes. So you have this skeleton and they have also some actions. I'm trying to use only one hand here, but it's not easy. Um, so they have different animations like maybe this one, like running. Okay, she left. Um, but now we are using Moho in, in a very different uh, way because this is not part of the, I mean, the, the, the TV show is not done with a, with a simple, no. It's not done with a complex rig. The, 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 the movies are done with simpler rigs, but more complex animation in some way. So we are trying to do that. Uh, so instead of, of building an entire skeleton that can turn in 360 and, and uh, blinking and talking at the same time and moving the hands or everything, we are rigging for the scenes. So we are working over uh, rough animation and we are following the rough animation to do that. And that allows us to uh, basically we can work as cleanup artists in Moho because we receive the, the rough animation. Then um, we, we make a very simple version of, of the animation with the skeleton. So we, we have the animation of the skeletons. And after that, we, we paint with the vectors and the vectors follow the skeleton. And then, so basically, we have a, we have a way to, to create a cleanup clean up income paint and then tunnels and all in one file. So we are saving a lot of time there and it has been great for my father's dragon, for instance, uh, but I, I can't show you anything, but I will show you about uh, my, about Wolf Walkers here. So um, one thing we have about the, the pipeline, <laughs> let me go to another one here. So it's very hard, you know, that when, when, you ha when they are making a movie, they, they have a pipeline. I will just play this while I talk, so it will be less boring, I guess. Um, so they have the pipeline. They have, of course, they have the, the, um, the animatic, then they, they have the, um, the posing, then the rough animation, then the cleanup, then uh, ink and paint, tonals, effects, comp, and you have several steps. And normally when, when they are building the, the movie, these steps are very rigid, and you, can, you know at what part of the scene you are because you, you know in what step you are. But with Moho, we have a, a, a problem which is like kind of a good problem, is, I, and it's that you can't put Moho in a, in a place inside of, the, of, of that pipeline because it doesn't work, it's, it's very flexible. So for production, is really not a nightmare, but it's not easy to, <laughs> to, to, to put all in place because you need to think about every scene and where uh, Moho can help. So for instance, in this scene, we had this information, which is uh, from the animatic, and then we had the background 
uh, which should be somewhere here. Well, it's, it's a split in several layers, but um, you have different different layers. With I, I will show you the, the the full thing. But basically, we had the the animatic and the background, and then we we built the entire scene with Mofo. So it, it never it never went to rough animation. It never went to in in campaign or or any of those. So let me just open this one. So this is not the final comp, but it's the final version of, of Moho. So we have all these characters moving here. We have, we have this uh, shadow that doesn't make any sense, but the, there is the shadow here. Um, and we have the other characters moving. And all these characters are made with vectors. So let me just zoom in. Um, so for instance, we have these uh, soldiers here. And I can look for the original so soldier, let me just filter this. Uh, here, so here you can see the keyframes of this soldier, and you can see the skeleton actually here. And he has some keyframes and a walk cycle, and it's actually a, a, a very simple walk cycle. But one nice thing about this is that if you modify the original soldier, everyone follows those uh that that new animation so we can very easily basically break the movie so now it looks like that so it's not running really at full speed here but you have that so one of the nice things about this is that we if we receive retakes they are very easy to apply but normally the retake is i don't like this walk cycle uh, it could be it could do something else, or I don't know. It could go up here a lot. Yeah, that's way better. So it goes like that. Yeah. So you can simply modify that. And the same for for other layers. I'm trying to. Sorry, I'm trying to, to navigate with only one hand. I'm very bad at this. Um, wait. <laughs> I need to select a layer. Um, now, I won't be able to select a layer with, with, with only one hand here. Um, but you can modify the files. Let me show you another file. Um, no, I will show you first the, the final comp of this. So this is part of the movie. This is the, the, the final composition of the scene. And you can see all the characters and all the lights working here. So we, we did a lot of scenes like this. We did a, a lot of crowds like this. Um, Another thing that is similar to this um, is also we receive the, the background animation, but then, no, it's not this one. This is a spoiler. Um, it's this one. So we have this scene that has many characters. Actually, in Wolf Walkers, any time there were too many characters, they send it to the MoFo department because basically they didn't, want, they didn't want to animate all those characters. So let me just turn on the acceleration here. So we have these two ladies, for instance, uh, talking here. And I want to select this layer. I use too many shortcuts, so I don't know where the tools are here. Uh, so you can see here that this woman talking is actually just a vector layer that is being moved with, uh, with some bones. And the vectors are moving, and that's how she talks. One nice thing is that, for instance, if for some reason I want uh, this person to be happier, or I don't know, the, the director says, I, I want her way happier. I can simply select all the keyframes here, and I can make her happier. I will just modify this. Let's say like that, like that. And now she's happier. And we can do the same with the other woman. Um, if I find the tool to select the layers, let's put this. So I, sim I can simply select the keyframes here. And I can set, uh, say, ooh, there. Yeah. So now every everyone is happier. And 
yeah, the, the, the scene doesn't make sense in the context of the movie anymore. But, but you can see that they are actually very simple rigs. They are very simple characters, but they work in the context of this scene. So I really like to work with, uh, with Moho for movies because you don't have to, wor to worry too much. And we have, a, we have the, the lucky to have good artists that can rig their own, their own characters. I'm still looking for the same tool. I always lost it, lose it, this one. Uh, we have good artists that uh, can rig, uh, rig, paint, and animate their own scenes. So, so we get files like this, and we save a lot of time. Like it, uh, doing this scene can take you, I don't know, one day, half a day, and, and you have it ready. So you don't have to worry too much. And we, we use a lot of cycles, as you can see here. Um, so we can also modify this cycle. And yeah. And one nice thing uh, about Wolf Walkers is that they um, didn't care much um, about what, is go what was going on with these scenes. I mean, no, they, they, they did care, but they, they let me put it in a better way. They gave us a lot of freedom on how to feel what, whatever was happening here. So we had a lot of fun just animated, animating these uh, little scenes. So we have another one here. Um, I think it's this one. Ah, yeah. This one is a spoiler. This one actually contains a lot of characters. Let, let me show you the, uh, the final scene here. So you can see it's, it's like the general shot of the entire town. And you have many things happening here. And I'm very sure no one has seen everything that is happening here uh, because it's a scene of uh, five seconds, three seconds, actually. But I will show you some highlights here. So we have these kids um, running to the cat. Then we have the cat that goes uh, over the roof there. So they are very angry about that. And if I select the the kids with the tool to select kids, where is it? Here. You can see they they are very simple. They I mean they are just some vector layers with a couple bones. Let me just remove this to show you the timeline better there. Um, so they are extremely simple. Um, and we just animate them, animated them and modified the points and, and made the, the, the cycle work. And that's it. Um, we have other, let me show you here. Let me just open more stuff here. Um, I can't show you all the characters at the same time because the file is too, um, it's too heavy. But we, f we have this guy trying to scare the kid, but that doesn't work, I think, here. Uh, the guy with the fish. Um, we have the. Let me see. Oi. We have the main characters there, as you can see. This is. Uh, officially, this is some model. This is the main character. Um, and I wanted to add more stuff. Let me, yeah, I like these corners here. Uh, let me just hide some other stuff so it can run a bit quicker. So I like, I like it to add stuff, uh, like, like this guy, uh, petting the sheep and talking with her. So they are all like little rigs, and we try to tell uh, some short stories there, uh, like these women talking bad about people here. Uh, oh, this guy being this one enjoying. I think there was another one that didn't like it too much, but I don't know where this that character is. Ah, we have some conversation here with, um, where is it? 
Ah, the pig here is asking for in instructions to the woman. Thanks, long live. Um, yet, many things like this dog that is not catching the plate is very disappointing. And I think actually this scene is a bit longer than it should. Yeah, it's very disappointing. Ah, it's a bit weird. Anyway, <laughs> many, many things happening here. Another thing that uh, we did a lot with, um, let me show you the final comp, maybe. Uh, uh, it's background animation. Because uh, the software can be very flexible to animate backgrounds. So basically, we can just import Photoshop files, and they keep the layers, and we can rig those layers. So every plant uh, or and all this magic that is happening um, that you see in the movie, this is made in Moho by a, a very small team. And the, the goal here was, OK, we want these plants to look kind of hand-drawn animation, but we don't want to work too much. I think that that is my goal in life. Like, uh, like I, I want it to look good, but I don't want to work too much. Uh, I, I mean, that should be animation, no? Uh, maybe. Oh, I'm offending someone. I don't know. Um, so let me open. Thi I think this file is uh, a bit heavier, so it will take a bit longer to open. But basically, we build. It, it's frozen now. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> so, so we have the uh, we rig these uh, plants. I will try to isolate one, but sorry, I will do this again. Um, so you can see here. You have some bones, and you can modify those. And actually, we have some um, some keyframes here that are um, elastic. Let me. Ju I will just remove the animation just to show you here. So, if I set this keyframe as elastic here, um, then I can just sketch where I want this plant to go. So I want it here now. I just draw that, and now it's doing that. Well, maybe it's, it is going too fast, so I, I will make it slower. So you can see that plant that is moving, and it's bouncing a little bit. And I can modify that, too. So it's actually, it can, it can look like, oh, this is so, maybe. I mean, I hope it, it can look so natural, but actually, uh, it's just a keyframe. Um, let me, where do I have the keyframe window? Here. So I can modify that. Um, let me just select this keyframe, and I can, I know I have four bounces. Maybe I want 12 bounces for some reason. So now, yeah, it's way more natural now. And maybe to scale it up, yeah, that's exactly what the director wants. So another thing, and this is Probably this file is going to take a long time to uh, load, too. So you can clap again if you want. Um, <laughs> this is, this is uh, something I, I, I really like. And th this is something that happened during the movie. And is that we had this scene. OK, so we had these characters. You know the, have you seen the movie? Yeah, yeah? OK, super. Um, how many times? No, it's OK. Um, <laughs> So we had we had this scene uh, in which we had these characters. You know, the, the characters are very flat. The language of the movie is very very flat, at least um, in in Kilkenny in, in in the in the castle. But um, we had these very flat characters that needed to move this cannon towards the camera, and the cannon the cannon the, it needed to look like kind of 3D. But if you if you put a cannon 3D there, it doesn't work. It looks very weird. 
So actually, there was a test. I don't have it here. I should have it. But uh, there was a test of a 3D canon going with the characters. And you know, you know when you combine 3D animation with 2D animation, it looks very weird if it is not done well. Um, so finally, what we decided to do was to rig the canon um, to make it look like 3D, but trying to keep the how, how flat the canon should be. So here's the, the final scene. I hope, I mean, I hope it, it, the effects works for you, because if not, then I shouldn't be showing it. Um, but you can see they are moving the canon, and everything is still working in the same language, I hope. So you don't you don't have like this weird sens sensation of this 3D canon moving, but you still have the effect of the canon going going towards the camera. So to do that, um, we had to rig. Um oh, it didn't take so long. Uh, we had to rig um, this 2D canon, and let me show you. Just you can believe me, it's very flat. So I don't have the, the the characters here, but you can see the the canon that is mo moving towards the camera, and there is some distortion there. there. There are the wheels, but this is all flat. And actually, if I go to the I will move this here. I, if I go to the layers here, you can see I have some controllers, so I can modify the rotation of the canons here. I can modify this. Um, I have some controls to move the wheels. But this is actually just flat layers simulating a 3D rotation. There is not nothing 3D here. And this bone does nothing, as you can see. Um, <laughs> but this one rotates uh, the wheel. Uh, and one of the, of the things we applied here is that um, we created some meshes. I actually, I was, I'm going to filter this. So we created several meshes to simulate this. So this is a mesh that is distorting the canon. So what is happening here? I don't know how visible it is. Uh, actually, let me just remove the mesh for a while. Um, well, now the animation is very broken, but I don't know if it is visible. But can you see that this, this part of the canon is uh, stretching a little bit, like this part in the middle? No? Can you say yes even if you don't see it? It's <laughs> we work hard on this. Um, <laughs> but basically, um, let me revert because I want to see the, the actual scene. But um, oh, it's loading this one again. One second. One second. And I need to. Filter the meshes here. OK. So basically, what you have here is this mesh that you can use to, uh, I will just remove the keyframes for this just to show you. Um, you can just distort. So um, you can use, for instance, this tool. And uh, we can make the canon happier, because this is all about making things happier. So there. Uh, so now the scene looks much better. <laughs> so so we have this kind of control over stuff. Um, there are other meshes that I like. For instance, this uh, this is all to, s to sell that this is moving in 3D, but it's not really a 3D object. So I have these points here, and these are part of the mesh, too, which I can distort to, sim so to simulate the 3D rotation. So that when the canon is coming closer to the camera, we, we, we are seeing more of the bottom part. Of course, no, not as extreme as this, but this is actually what is happening in some way. Um, and we also, if you want to play with the perspective, we, you can do it a bit bigger. And of course, there is a moment where the, the bitmap starts to look bad, but especially in the preview here. But we try to distort the stuff without breaking. Oh, it's very dark here, actually. Can you see? Anyway, so I wanted to show you a bit. If you want to, to see, I, I, I can show you how to create something like this, if that's OK. Yeah? OK. So I, I don't have anything from, from the studio here, but 
I have actually this this is um, a 3D image created by by um, JB from the studio. So I have this is a simple PNG of a um, um, of a character. So it's just an image, and and what I can do is I can go to draw and create a smart world layer, which is this mesh. So now I have this line um, around the character, and I can add some points to this line. And I can also add points to the details of this. So for instance, if I want to move the mouth, um, I can simply add points to the mouth. And maybe I will add a couple points here. And now if I go to the timeline, I can select this. And now I can maybe scale this like that. So maybe there. If I add more points, it, it will look better. Uh, but let's suppose I want that. So now I have this animation. And I can hide the mesh, and now uh, probably it, it will look better. Yeah, there. And another nice thing is that if we create a bone layer here, mm, I can put these layers inside of the bone. And now I can create a couple bones. So if I create one bone and then another bone here, now I can animate this character with the bones. So maybe I need to reduce the strength of both, uh, maybe like that. Let me try again. Yeah. Now it's distorting. But also, we have something that uh, it's called smart bones. Um, so I can create a, a new bone here. And I can create an action for this. So I will open the, the actions window um, here. It's too big. I will make it a bit smaller. There. So I can create an action for these bones. So basically, what I will do is I will tell the software every time this bone rotates up. Actually, let me just reduce the strength of this. OK. Every time this bone rotates up, I want this point to scale down and scale here. So I want something like that, OK? And then I can create a second action for this. And I can tell the software every time this bone rotates down, uh, I want the point to do the opposite. So I will select these points. And I will scale it down and maybe Something like that. And now I will just adjust some details. So once I do that, I can go back to the main line. And I can simply, I mean, I can still move this bone, but I can also move this bone. And I have a controller for that. So you can combine several controllers for it. So basically, for instance, with, with the Canon, uh, when I was rotating the, the wheels, it was this kind of action that was happening. Um, so, so you could continue adding more things, or um, another thing that we are uh, using um, to animate backgrounds, because sometimes we have like shaky, I mean, backgrounds that are shaking a lot. Um, so we added some dynamics to the backgrounds. So there was, if we have something like an earthquake, or stuff like that, and we have uh, a lot of trees in the background, and we need to move the trees with the with the earthquake. We we applied something like this, um, which I, I just select these two bones. Um, sorry, I need to press some shortcuts. Um, and add some dynamics, and that means that now every time I actually let me just reduce the strength of this a little bit. There. So now that means that every time I um, shake this, those bones are going to move automatically. So, so now they are shaking a little bit. Maybe they are, they are taking too much of the of the body. So I will just um, bind the points of the body to this bone. I need my other hand again. It, it doesn't want to do it. 
Uh, but I will just bind this. So just to, to avoid that distortion. So you can see the, the ears are moving. Of course, we can read this better uh, if we have more time and more hands. But um, yes. But I, I can also modify these values. So so I can define maybe I want I want them to 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 um, spring less. So now they will be softer, but maybe I want them to rotate le less too. So I have these three values, and I can modify that. And I, I basically can get I can get different materials from it. So maybe I want more rotation there. So we are we are applying um, a lot of that. And another thing that we used also on my father's dragon is, of course, I can't show you scenes of that, but um, there is wind. I don't know if, if that is that a spoiler. There is wind in the movie at some point, moving things. Uh, so we created a, a wind tool, which works very similar to that. But um, you see all these, um, all these leaves moving. They are actually moving automatically with the wind tool, so I can modify that too. So let me just uh, remove the animation that I al I have already done here. So if I hit play, I can make the the wind stronger, and it will modify everything. So and I can change the the di the direction of it. So I can simply modify that in real time, and I can change the the um, turbulence uh, too. So you can modify several values. So if you need to to give life uh, to a background very fast, uh, you can do that. I know this is not per a perfect storm or anything <laughs> closer, but um, you can tweak the values and you can also modify the bones. So uh, it works for some of some of the scenes there. And hopefully you won't notice that this wind was done automatically. Um, we are doing a lot of uh, background animation, both in 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 World Volkers and in uh, My Father's Dragon. Um, in in this case, there is some background animation, but it it just follows the principles of it. I this is not part of any of those movies, but I want to show you this file because I think it shows uh, a good example of it. So you can see here again, everything here is 2D. And everything is being distorted with with meshes, and the only thing 3D here is the is the camera for the for the parallax e effect. Um, but you can see it's um, it's moving, and this uh, kind of uh, dragon is actually a, a Mexican god. Um, it's made with bones too, and it has a, a, a rig we can. Um, distort some stuff. It, it has some actions here, so we can make it blink, rotate the pupils, and move it up or down. So we are applying here the same the same principles. I, I really wish I could show you <laughs> all the rest. Let me see if I have um, something. So another thing that it's here. Um, another thing we are trying to mimic with this, because uh, this is a 2D rigged animation software, so we, we don't want to tell you you can do everything here or, or, or uh, it will replace uh, traditional anima animation or anything, because that's, that's totally not true. And there is a, it's an entire art and, and and also a lot of artists, it, it depends, the result depends uh, of that. But we are trying to add some tools, at least to get closer, a little bit. So now we added this, uh, what we call Vitruvian bones, which, um, sorry, you can replace different uh, parts of the body, but keeping the, keeping the structure of the skeleton. So basically, you know, when you have a rigged animation and you have a character, it's very easy that the mom movement will be only like this because you can move only the, the bones like this because this is not 3D. 
So wh what we are trying to do here is that if the bone can't do that, then you, you could just switch it to another pose and you still have a skeleton for that pose and this skeleton works with the rest of the, of the body. So you can just switch different limbs here but keeping the skeleton. So it is, sti it is a still a rig character. You have uh, IK and FK and everything that comes like from 3D software that is applied here, but you have these kind of controls. So some of the characters um, in, in My Father's Dragon 2 are, are animated like this. They, we have different parts that we can, we can switch. Um, Let me just go here. Uh, just in case I have the, <laughs> sorry, let me just, I, I, it will be, I have the trailer here because I want to show you, I want you to, if you, if you want, if you can see, oh, is that, yeah. If you can see the elements and how they play with the rest of the, of the movie. And also, I wanted to show you that I need to update my, magic powers. When she sleeps, she turns into a wolf. She's a wolf walker. Something's happened to me. Be a wolf! Questions or comments there? Okay. Do you want this mic? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, I would like to thank you so much for all this information. It really helped all of us. Uh, I have noticed that uh, you are kind of composting the whole scene all together in, in Moho. Yeah. Uh, so if you have uh, how do you manage the the full team working all together in uh, in one shot? Uh, each animator is re responsible for one character, or one, one animator is responsible for the whole scene. Yeah, normally we try to uh, we, with the team we we try to keep one scene per per animator. So sometimes uh, it, it's a bit harder, but uh, we simply give more time to the animator so he can. Uh, play with uh, play together with all the characters and feel what what it needs to happen in the animation so uh, normally they are like like a prize for the animator kind of a prize or it's like oh you received a, a new scene with 100 characters congratulations you have three weeks um, <laughs> but we we prefer to do it that way uh, sometimes we split but it normally it represents like a problem in the pipeline and also like merging the files I, I, I and, uh, and probably a, a, an issue like artistically, but I think one one of, of the good things that we learned with Wolf Walkers and, and with My Father's Dragon is that it is actually possible, and it is not too terrible. I hope, Mansur. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it works. Also, um, well, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot to mention Isabel is here also helping with Moho. She's the 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 project manager of My Father's Dragon, too, so she's involved in the entire production. Um, because, stop the clap. Because I wanted to make this my point. <laughs> no, sorry, continue. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I wanted to make the point because normally uh, in, in these kind of presentations or even when we talk about uh, anything related to animation, we, forgot, we forget about production. And they are so so important, and and they are pushing the movie the entire, and they, they have so much drama behind, I, which is under NDA. Um, so I can tell you, but uh, yeah, they, they re I'm, I'm very sure there 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 are people from production here, no? Oh, no? 
Ah, then I won't continue saying this. Um, yeah, no, but we have to, to value that. And something that happened with, uh, with the Moho team in My Father's Dragon is that we weren't working well until we got a very good coordinator. And that is great. And that, that is Sarah O'Gorman, who is, a, is an Irish coordinator, and she, she is great. And it's incredible how much better that can help and, uh, and that can work. And that actually helps with distributing the scenes and, and seeing what do, who is doing what and how it could work. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other questions? Or comments? Somewhere here? <coughs> just, a test, just in case. Okay. So the question that I want to ask is that those who want to learn uh, the program Moho itself, wh where do I start? In other words, uh, is there a course for Moho? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Okay, again. Uh, if I want to learn Moho, ah, yeah. uh, where do I start? Is it online uh, course or is it in other schools? Yeah, we, uh, there are some online courses that are, n are not official yet. I mean, there are different users or different animators making courses. We have a YouTube channel also full of, of tutorials. Yeah. Uh, we have the manual I in the software. And actually right now, not right now, because I'm making this for, <laughs> mm. but now I just finished a project and my next project is to, to make uh, a set of tutorial vi videos to learn Moho from scratch to, yeah, exactly so, so that, that should appear in the ask. next month. Sorry? Mm. The exactly that I want to ask. If I want to learn Moho, I can watch tutorials on YouTube or I can take a course online. Yeah, I can mean, you, you have to wait for that one, but, but right now there, there is a lot of information on YouTube and also on, on our web, mohoanimation.com. Um, mm -hmm. So we have some courses there too, like, uh, I, mean, I mean, video, tut video tutorials. Okay, gracias, señor. De nada. Can I say something, by the way? I'm sorry, I don't want to sell stuff, but just in case you are interested, there is a... Um, uh, there is a promo code for Animatex uh, we are going to announce. <laughs> let, me, let me just find it here. Um, where is it? Well, I don't find it, but I, it's just, but it's true, it, it's true. Um, co how? I don't remember the name of the file, sorry. But there is a code. It's, it, it's Moho Animatex. And if you go to mohoanimation.com um, and you put the code, it's 50% uh, off for perpetual license. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, you can. We, we are going to have a booth also here, so you can ask about that. We have a little sign with the code. Uh, any other questions or comments there? I think. Okay. N normally in rigging, we need to separate the layers to animate. In Moho, we don't need to separate the layers? Uh, you not always. Um, I mean, sometimes you, if, if you are very extreme, you can animate in one layer and you can put everything in one layer. You will suffer after that probably, but you can, technically you can do it. Um, something that, that is nice about Moho is that you are actually always like bending the layers. So for instance, if you are animating an arm, you don't need to cut the arm in two, in two different layers. You, you just put a couple bones and bend it. So you don't need to separate that arm. Um, but if you are working with Photoshop files, for instance, you can create the Photoshop file, you can separate the layers. Not every single limb, not, not everything, but you can, you, I mean, you can't have both arms in the same layer because that, that is going to be a nightmare to animate. Um, 
but one nice thing is that if you do that separation, which is not too much separation, but if you do it in Photoshop, then you can import it in Moho, uh, and you have the same layers that are from Photoshop, and uh, you have it in Moho, uh, and you have real-time connection also. So if you go back to Photoshop and modify that layer, that appears on Moho too, that, that change. So it's, it's very flexible in that case. Okay, another question, please. Sorry? Another question. Another question. Ah, yes. Uh, when you show us the soldiers moving, yeah. you made a change to one person and the others changed. It's not a copy-paste? No. Mm. No, it's, uh, we have something um, that is called um, references, the reference layer, which is basically you, you create a clone of the character. So it's like duplicating it but everything that the original character does, it will be copied um, in the other character. Now, I don't know what scene is that one, but let me find it. Maybe, yeah, this one. So that's why I, I when, when I search for the, I think I broke the entire file, but they're very shy. Um, so that's why, why I, I search for the soldier original because that that is the original copy of the of the character. So anything that I do over this character, it, it is reproduced um, over the rest. So you, you have that. Ah, something I wanted to show you and, and I forgot. But can I show you it now? We have time. Okay. Um, is that? One thing that, that is nice about working with this is that we are developing new tools while working on the movie. So, so if we need something um, from the software, normally we can get it, which is it's, it's, it's very nice. Um, and one thing that we got um, from a previous version is that, for instance, I have these three characters working. These are part of, um, of a scene in Wolf Walkers. I will need my two hands, so I will try to. You, do you hear me if I do that? Yeah? Okay. But it will. <laughs> I will try to do it with one hand. Um, oh, no, it's okay. I feel bad now. Thank you. Okay, just for, for this file. So basically, what I can do here is that um, if I have a character here, this has a has, again, uh, like a very simple skeleton. Actually, it's very easy to break it because it's, it's very, very simple. But if I have a work cycle here or any animation, um, I can simply copy all these keyframes. And if I have a similar character in a structure like this one, I can just select that and paste that animation in a relative way. So when I, when I do that, the same animation is applied but considering the new proportions of the character. So we, we use this a lot for this big crowd. Sometimes we have like 300 characters walking and it's, it's very boring <laughs> to do all that uh, if you are doing it by hand, but we just did that and then we modified, I don't know, the, how, how long is the, the step, for instance. Um, or, or we could modify maybe, I don't know, maybe this character will go down and up way more, so, so we just mod made some small modifications, uh, this is not a small, but sm small modifications to the character, so now we have a new work cycle. And then we, ca we can use the sequencer to also modify the timing, so maybe this character is going to start working a bit later, so I can do that too. So we have this kind of recycling options. Thank you very much. Any, any other questions? I think we uh, will have to uh, to wrap up. Oh. Yeah, because we're, we're a little bit late uh, on our friends at the gate. Uh, uh, but thank you very much. Okay. We, we can have the last question. Yeah, maybe the, the last one. Yeah. We, we <laughs> we're doing one, one more one more question. You are taking the time for the question. <laughs> thank okay. you. I mean. Uh, okay. Th thank you uh, for the information. Uh, I just want to think, uh, how did you convince uh, studios uh, and uh, industry companies uh, to involve Moho in, in the process? You know, studios don't like uh, 
new software uh, to break up uh, the process? So how did you manage to do that? Can, can you, can, sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. I want to, to know how did you convince companies to involve Muhu in the, the animation process of their work? Right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, there is something very interesting happening in Moho, and I'm seeing here, uh, like in, in, in Egypt and in other places, uh, normally companies that are not from the U.S. and from Europe, I mean, in countries that are not the U.S. or Europe, Moho is very popular because for some reason, I don't know, it, it makes it easier. It, the same happens in Chile. In Chile, it's, Moho is extremely popular. <laughs> Uh, and there are many, many companies using it for, for short commercials, uh, music videos, and stuff like that. Now there are other bigger companies also using it. For instance, uh, on DreamWorks Television, they use it a lot. Sadly, they can't really show what they do with that, but they are using it. Um, I knew, like last week, uh, Disney is also using it in, in, in some stuff that we can't share either. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there, there are some companies, and there are there are a lot of smaller studios using it. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it still has this idea of being like a s kind of secret secret weapon of of those companies. I really hope it can grow more. But so far, we are we are there. Well, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very very much, Victor, for this very interesting masterclass. Uh, بنشجعكم كلكم ان ان انتوا تتعرفوا اكتر على موهو وعلى فيكتور من خلال ال ال البوث اللي هيكون لي uh, بداية من بكرة كمان بكرة هيكون في الجوب فير وهتبدا منطقة الالعاب ومنطقة ال VR برضه نشجعكم كلكم تجربوها uh, بكرة اليوم هيبدا الساعة 5 بعروض افلام المسابقة الرسمية لمشاريع التخرج وبعد كده uh, البرنامج كله موجود اونلاين على الويب سايت تقدروا تشوفوه وهيكون هنا uh, وفي نفس الوقت في القاعة الشرقية اللي هي uh, جنب القاعة دي على طول وفي برضو حاجات بتحصل برا اللي هي uh, حاجات الماركت زي موهو زي الستوديوز وكده uh, نتمنى تكونوا استمتعتوا النهاردة بالبرنامج ونشوفكم بكرة Thank you.